Well, thank you very much for, uh, uh, for this conference, uh, organizers, uh, and for giving me this chance to give a talk here. <coughs> so um, today I would like to talk about uh, torque manifolds arising from root systems, especially for type B and C. Uh, but, uh, and we can start from root system and we can construct a torque, man torque manifolds. But if we start from root system, um, uh, root system itself is uh, kind of dry and uh, it's not easy to get the idea of our construction. So let me start from uh, Lie algebras or Lie groups. And uh, first 15 minutes, I will uh, spend time for the, for, uh, to, to share the idea of the construction uh, with you. So um, let me start from uh, Lie group, SL and C. This is uh, uh, the set of complex uh, matrices of size n uh, whose determinant is equals to 1. Yeah? Um, yeah, so this is a, a group, and also at the same time, this is a manifold, so it's a Lie group. If you prefer, it's a, a algebraic group. And um, so when, when we study this uh, space, um, it's sort of a nonlinear uh, space because it's a manifold and group. So it's, it's good to look at uh, its linearization. It's easier to study that. So what we do is taking the uh, the tangent space at the origin, and we linearize the group structure uh, to the uh, algebra, uh, algebra structure on this linear space. So this is the tangent space at the origin, and that is given by the traceless matrix, complex traceless matrix. Okay, and <coughs> from here to there, the uh, we take the tangent space, and uh, after studying this, we may uh, return to the original group by taking the exponential of the matrix. Okay. Okay. So now we want we study this algebra. Well, uh, this is algebra in the sense uh, the product is given by the commuta commutator, yeah, standard commutator. And now we look at this algebra and want to study the structure of this algebra. But um, to do that, um, it is known that uh, it is known that it's good to look at uh, Cartan subalgebra. It's Cartan. So uh, sorry, I ha I don't have place. But in this algebra, we have a Cartan subalgebra consisted uh, with uh, diagonal matrices. Um, <coughs> Uh, so traceless diagonal matrices, and this is called Cartan subalgebra. Uh, uh, it is in fact um, maximal abelian subalgebra. Oops. So um, when we look at this subalgebra. This is commutative algebra, so it doesn't have any algebra structure. I mean, it's the trivial Lie algebra. It doesn't have structure from here. So to study this algebra, we, it's good to look at this over this subalgebra H. What's, th what's there outside of this H is important. And what we do is, um, so we look at an action, uh, well, the action of H on this algebra, and we do the uh, uh, simultaneous eigen decomposition of this linear space. Yeah? That's possible because uh, elements in H are all commutative, so we can do the uh, simultaneous eigen decomposition. That is given by this form. Um, Here, uh, this H is this one, and Eij, Eij is the matrix um, which has one only at the 
ij's position and they accept the other position, all other positions are zero. So this is a decomposition of this linear space into diagonal paths and off diagonal paths. Okay, clear? And um, this is in fact uh, the decomposi uh, simultaneous decomposition of, of this uh, action. And um, this part is uh, uh, eigenvalue zero because it's commutative. H commutes with H, of course. And for this gives actually an eigenvector in the sense that if you write this as h, small h, this uh, product uh, is actually the same as the, the i's coordinates minus j's coordinate times eij. So in this sense, e, this eij is uh, an eigenvector uh, corresponding to uh, this eigenvalue. But what's eigenvalue here? Um, eigen value. Because uh, we, we are doing this uh, uh, eigen decomposition, but we have infinitely many uh, matrices which acts on this algebra, a uh, linear space. So the, the eigenvector here, uh, sorry, eigenvalue here should be an association from, for each small each, each matrix, it's genuine eigenvalue. Yeah? Oops. This, this uh, form should, should be called eigenvalue here. Okay? And obviously, this is an element of the dual of the, uh, this linear space H. Okay? And uh, if you write Ti as the linear function which uh, takes the ith coordinate of, of this uh, h, small h, uh, this one is exactly Ti minus Tj. Okay? So in this decomposition, this is uh, uh, eigenvalue zero here, and they have eigenvalue ti minus tj. Yeah? <coughs> and important structure of this Lie algebra is contained in this, this, this side. Okay? <coughs> well, uh, and uh, the root system of SLN is just uh, the set of non zero. Eigenvalues in this in this sense on elem elements of the dual of the real, uh, this H yeah <coughs> non-zero why we ask non-zero is that in in here the uh, zero eigenvalues part we don't have anything any important information here yeah? okay. And so we're going to make fun out of this root system. Um, so uh, let's see n equals 3 example, which is type A2. Um, in this case, our phi is basically um, t1 minus t2, t1 minus t3, T2 minus T3 and their signs. Uh, coming from off diagonal uh, elements. And uh, let, uh, let, let us uh, write this as alpha 1 and this alpha 2. They are so called simple roots. And uh, if you write a picture, um, they, these roots generate um, real two-dimensional subspace in this complex uh, vector space. And if you, write, if you use standard inner product um, for uh, this T1, T2, T3, uh, sorry, so this is three-dimensional complex linear subspace, and the, the, 
the linear sub real linear subspace generated by these vectors are two-dimensional, uh, which is given by the uh, linear subspace whose element satisfying uh, the sum of each coordinates has to be zero. It's a hyperplane in the three-dimensional. Anyway, if we write picture, we can write in this way, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 1, alpha, alpha, alpha 2, etc. There are six vectors. Okay? And um, from this ro these roots, um, I'm not going to look at this side, uh, but I look at the, uh, the dual side in the, in the, in ha, in, uh, sorry, in H. Um, we consider the dual, dual basis of alpha and alpha 2, uh, defined by omega i, alpha j equals to delta ij, and then this omega 1 to omega, omega 1 and omega 2 generate uh, a linear, real linear subspace of this uh, complex linear space. And um, if, you look, if we identify this and that uh, by standard inner product, we can write a picture. And uh, alpha 1 is perpendicular to alpha 2, yeah, because of this condition. So, uh, sorry, omega 1 perpendicular to alpha 2. So, omega 1 should be in this direction, perpendicular to alpha 2. And, uh, but the omega 1, alpha 1 is 1. So, the direction is the direction near to alpha 1. So uh, omega 1 is in this direction. Sorry. In this direction. And omega 2 is uh, perpendicular to alpha 1. So in this direction. And positive direction compared to uh, alpha 2. So in this direction. So this is omega 1. This is, oh, sorry. this is omega 2. They, they are called so-called uh, uh, co-weights in terms of root systems. And we, we make cone generated by this omega 1 and omega 2. And in fact, we have an um, action given by symmetric group on this root system acting on the indices naturally. And so we have, we can induce this action to here or there. And we, so now we have action, S, S3 action on this two-dimensional linear space, and we permute this cone to other cones. And then we can get, um, these cones. Yeah, and, uh, now, we, I only look at the maximal cones, but if we allow to put uh, smaller cones, like this cone, or this cone, or this cone, we, we get the fan, okay? And um, the idea of this construction, um, sorry. Okay, sorry, uh, the mitoric manifold X phi is the, the torque manifold. Uh, so from this we can get a fan. Delta phi. Uh, torque, uh, the X phi is the torque manifold corresponding to the, this fan. Uh, fan of wide chambers in the sense of root systems. Sure. What is the last is the lattice? Thank you. Yeah, I forgot to say. Uh, lattice structure is given by the so-called co-weight lattice. So in this case, um, no. in this case, this is just omega 1 plus omega 2. Co-weight lattice in, in the sense of root systems. And that's the important part, actually. Can you lattice by in general? Well, it's not really a fundamental weight in my point of view, but um, so uh, my definition of this lattice is free lattice uh, generated by this omega one and omega two. Fundamental weights. Well, it's uh, it's slightly diff. In my point of view, it's slightly different uh, so with. The basis of, uh, just a 
It's usually called Kuwait, I guess. Right. Is it true? My question is, what is the definition of Kuwait? Ah, Kuwait is just a dual of simple oh, roots. Yeah, yeah. And you know, uh, fundamental weights sh we should we should like this. Yeah. Thank you. And um, so we get a torque manifold. But in general, uh, there is a picture for torque manifold. If you have a torque manifold, um, we always have open dense orbit concept by uh, well, in this sense this is um, let's say this is two dimensional so let's say c, c star 2 and we have um, invariant divisors or so, something yeah and it, when we study torque manifolds or torque varieties important information is not in here yeah Important information is is lives live in this, these invariant divisors. They are the the uh, structure of the historic variety. And here we decompose this algebra into the sum of uh, sorry j c j. And when we look at this algebra, important structure of this Lie algebra live in here. Yeah? And the root system uh, somehow has information, important information, what's in here. And we constructed a fan from this root system. Well, it's not really roots, but they are, roughly speaking, the dual roots. And the fan have information of here. So these two pictures for torque manifold and uh, Lie algebra uh, coincide in, in this torque variety. Yeah. So this is the idea. Idea is very simple. Okay. And uh, I just constructed for type A, but uh, for arbitrary uh, complex some simple uh, Lie algebra or root systems, arbitrary root systems, uh, we can construct similarly the torque manifold associated to Y chambers. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Okay, so type B and C. Um, I would like to start from uh, Lie algebra because it's easier to understand. Uh, but um, somehow, if you start uh, for B, type B and C, the structure of the root system and Lie algebra are a little complicated and takes time. So let me give. Um, equivalent but alternative uh, description of these tor torque manifolds. But, um, well, sorry. So the type B, root system type B is coming from uh, this one. And CN comes from the symplectic, oops, Lie algebra. You can start from here, if you want. <coughs> but let me give an alternative description. Um, so let's consider the cube, n-dimensional cube, um, yeah, inside of Rn. This is just a product of uh, intervals. And uh, let P the the polytope in Rn um, uh, um, given uh, sorry given by given by um, iteration of uh, truncations of this cube. Uh, along um, all all faces of codimension, all faces of codimension less than or equal to two. Ah, sorry, I forgot to say one thing for type A. Uh, for type A, the torque manifold is coming from a so-called parameterhedron, so the the polytope. Uh, is in two-dimensional case like this, and in three-dimensional case, 
uh, what the perm the hedron is, we cut, we cut, we truncate the vertices first, and we cut the edges next. So this kind of construction gives the type A torque manifolds. And for type B and C, I'm not giving a fan, but um, the polytope can be described by this uh, method. And so uh, I'm going to write a picture. So I hope you can see the similarity here and there. And when n equals 3, we start with cube. Yeah? And then, like in this case, we cut the vertices first. Yeah? And we cut the edges. Well, the picture looks a little messy, but you can see what, what I'm doing here. And this is the polytope, what we are thinking. And um, uh, uh, basically, this is the polytope for type B and C, but there is a, uh, a small misleading given by me. Um, we think this polytope uh, for type B and C, but the integral points, the lattice points for type B and C are different. So the lattice point uh, for type B is given by this one. Oops. Um, this plus this plus. One. Well, it might look a little silly because this is just equals to the standard Z3 in, in the Euclidean space. But uh, for type C, our lattice is given by this is the same until here. The, the generators are the same, but here we have factor. 1 over 2. So there's a slight difference. Well, so we can kind of, in my point of view, uh, the shape or well, shape of the polytope are same in a sense, but the lattice points are different. Obviously, of course, uh, if we um, identify this with standard C these three lattice, the shape would be different. Sure. But uh, for me, it looks kind of similar. And um, so what is similar? What, 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 what is the sense of similar? Um, one um, easy thing is that um, there are better numbers. Uh, so sorry. So from here, we can get torque manifold uh, in general for type Bn and type Cn. Only the last component of the uh, uh, vector is uh, different. And in general, batch numbers are the same. So in a sense, uh, the topological, uh, topologically, uh, in a sense, similar. And um, so uh, as a group, cohomology group, do not, uh, does not distinguish the torque manifold type B and C. Yeah? And I, I have a conjecture, because for me, they look similar. Um, the ring structure yeah, is different. This is a conjecture. I haven't proved that yet. As Graded rings. Uh, it's just a singular cohomology uh, over Z coefficient. 
Sure. And so I want to prove this, but uh, I haven't succeeded that yet. And um, so my, uh, but still I want to distinguish these two manifolds in a sense. So uh, in this time I would uh, like to say that, um, ah, sorry, this is n is greater than 3. Because n equals 2, type B2 and C2 are the same as root systems. But again, n is greater than or equals to 3. These two manifolds are not diffeomorphic. So um, the structure of this polytope uh, are similar, but uh, uh, so the difference of these root systems are in the uh, smooth structure of these manifolds. And um, very easy corollary, easy corollary is that uh, by establishing this theorem, um, uh, we get this proposition. Let that find phi dashed uh, be irreducible root systems. Could be uh, classical, could be exceptional types. And then they are the same root system in the sense that their Cartan matrices are the same up to permutation, if and only if. Um, the corresponding toric manifolds are diffeomorphic. So in some sense, uh, uh, the information of root system is, uh, sorry, the smooth manifold. Manifolds. Um, the difference of root system appears as the smooth structure of the manifolds. And um, yeah, so let me, uh, since I have three minutes, let me uh, give a sketch of proof of the theorem, because it's kind of interesting. Um, in, in this polytope, in general, um, the faces, uh, facets of this polytope are, facets of this polytope are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the with a non-empty subset of plus minus n, which is the set of 1 to n and minus 1 to minus n, and satisfying um, i minus, minus i, i and minus i cannot simultaneously contained in, in, the, in this set. This is one to one correspondence, so um, for each subset a, we get an uh, invariant divisor of the toric manifold. And, and um, so the intersection number, we can consider intersection numbers. Um, so dA is the, uh, the invariant divisor of the toric manifold corresponding to this uh, facet. And uh, this is the homo a fundamental homology class. And for type B, so the, this correspondence is uh, the same for type B and C. For type B, uh, we can compute this um, this one. Ah, uh, and sorry, this invariant divisor uh, intersect trivially, uh, geometrically trivially, unless uh, these sets are a chain of subsets. So if, if they don't uh, intersect geometrically, the intersection number is obviously zero. So we can always assume this. And um, so we get Young diagram corresponding to this weakly decreasing sequence. And uh, if you write Young diagram like this, um, to compute this, we uh, shade each box of Young diagram and we compute 
we count the number of box here, here, and there. This and this are the same because this ah, sorry, this is the anti-diagonal line. And we consider the number, uh, the bino product of the binomial for each corner. And we take the product and um, so this intersection number is given by um, well S is the number of the corners of this Young diagram and uh, 2 to the here is Q then 2 to Q times Y1 da, 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 Y S until the final corners well it's a little complicated but uh, anyway we can compute these uh, intersection numbers by Young diagrams and um, by using this, we can compare uh, uh, characteristic classes of these two manifolds, uh, like Whitney classes or Pontryagin classes. So in a sense, these Young diagrams compute uh, characteristic classes, and we can distinguish them. Um, so it's interesting for me. Um, anyway, I stop here.